Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thank you for joining us here on this channel. Here we like to have some boat and outboard and outboards and boats and boats and outboards and outboards and boaty things. Ooh, on a stand. Um, well, we've got, I brought in a victim. I was working on the little British seagull. And I got parts for it and whatnot, but I want to go ahead and get this little Johnson finished. Um, if I can. Um, it has issues. And I don't know if it was the last video or the one before it. It wasn't discharging water out of the telltale at all. Or very little. Um, it's got the true absolute quintessential garbage raider on it. CPS, plastic top, bottom, leaks everywhere. So I'm going to play with that a little bit, but I got some other things. I got some things, my little peas, just ping, 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 in there. When that gets to happening, you, you never know. But my little pig hanging around, and I'm like, you know, I think I've done this before, and it saved me a whole lot of heartache. My heart was aching, and it, it saved me all that heartache. You understand? So we're going to get back on this here, uh, garbagey Johnson 15, 1990, if I remember correctly. Um, I don't even know where this motor came from. Well, that probably covers about 20% of the motors I get. It just showed up. They do that a lot. They just show up. So she shown up, showed up. And it, I can tell, rode hard, put away very salty, left in that condition for a long time. When I see the symptoms that I'm seeing with this motor, um, yeah. Probably stored outside. Um, the way I can tell that is <laughs> the creepy crawlies. The creepy crawlies don't like the cold no more than me and you like the cold. But, so, when I open one that I see salt, I see age, corrosion, white powder, black mold, which this one was, co it was is, covered with. Still is. Um, certain other symptoms let me know that it's salty, it ain't been running a long time, it was most likely stored outdoors. When I get a motor where somebody tells me, yeah, this thing's been in my garage for the last 10 years. I'm tired of tripping over it. I want it out of here. Is your garage heated? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a heated garage. The creepy crawly going to be in there. Maybe a rat's nest. But there'll be the creepy crawlies. Cocoons. Crawlies, crows, they'll be in there. And I'll show you that in an upcoming video here because I just took one in that was stored indoors in a warm basement, so to speak. Um, he said it hadn't been run seven or eight years. And I took a little peeps it. I peeps it on. <laughs> under that bonnet. Shut that and lock it. Them crawlies was all in there. Cocoon, spider web. But I like getting them that way. That's the way I like getting them. 
dusty, full of crawlies. I got something full of them crawlies. They won't be crawly in too long. But they might get me him twinks. You understand? So we're gonna get back on this Johnson fitting 1990. Um but I also have to um, do, say do one more thing. In the videos, two videos ago for sure, I had mentioned, and I'm doing a giveaway for this wonderful product here, Super Clean. And it is a wonderful product. They don't pay me, okay? Um, I was using that long before they contacted me and sent me some samples and stuff like that. If you haven't used it and you're doing outboards or boats, enough said, let's move on. Um, but I had mentioned that there was an association with another outboard company that was connected to an outboard that I had taken in called a Volvo Penta. I might have said Siegel earlier. I didn't mean to if I did. Um, the Volvo Penta, I took in a 14 horse, I think it was. Yeah, a 140. Volvo Penta. I also have a 140 Archimedes Penta. Same engine. Um, but they had an association with another outboard manufacturer, and I wanted to see if anybody could guess what outboard company I was thinking. I'm not saying that they didn't have others because outboards have been like that, you know, since right after World War II, if not even before, where they partnered up with Crosley Motors, which was a, a car company. They, they partnered up with Home Light, made the Bearcat, um, all kind of goofy stuff. But this was a particular outboard. I mean, it was marketed as a Volvo Penta. All right, so the, the whole outboard was marketed as a Volvo Penta, and it was a different company altogether. And then I understand, even though this other outboard company made a whole Volvo Penta outboard, they also made the lower units for some of the actual Volvo Archimedes Pentas. And Crescent, I think, was another one. But anyway, I'm not even going to say who it is. I'm going to try. Now, keep in mind, I'm a computer idiot. I don't know computers well at all. Um, people think because you can put up a YouTube video, you should be, you know, you know everything about computers. No. But anyway, um, there's only three people that chimed in on what I was looking for. I have not done the YouTube shuffle to pick one of those three, but there was only three. But we're going to go another week. <laughs> um, well, no, I guess we're not because I'm going to put the links. I'm going to attempt to put the links down below on what I was looking for, and that will show enough, clear it up, and that's what I was looking for. So there should be at least two links down there that will show you what I was looking for. So, and then next video I'll announce, I'll do the little YouTube shuffle thing and it'll pick a, a winner out of those three. Um, so, but anyway, that's fine. Um, so we're gonna get back on this little Johnson. Am I forgetting anything else? The Seagull, I'm gonna, on the back burner a little bit. Um, and then, uh, I've been working on my boat out there. It needed a little more than I thought it did, so that's going to, before I can get out and do a fishing video, I'm going to have to do just a few things yet. So let's get back on this little Johnson. Let's get to it. Oh, 
dropping all my little washers and everything. Ugh. But I got them. No, I don't. I'm going to eat crickets. Crickets! Got to use a razor blade to get them up off the floor. I ain't got no fingernails. I got most of them, I think. Alright. Oh, I went out to the pile there and got me a another carburetor. I'm going to take that top off. It does not appear to be cracked anywhere that I can see. And they appear to be the same. Yep. Now here's my busted one. Now we gotta get this guy off. Using that gasket, but I'm gonna have to clean this a little bit anyway, cause she be filthy. So we had to clean that up. You can see there's a little rust in some of them holes. So I'm just going to spray it real quick with some canned carb cleaner and some compressed air. I'll be back. And when you're tightening these plastic tops back down, there's a number in sequence you're supposed to go, and it's written right in the plastic itself. And the main thing is you don't want to use your you know your driver deals to do this you want to get up a, a screwdriver and do it yourself real gently and just go over them because they will crack get in there they will crack and a lot of times people go to clean their carburetor and uh, they over reef on them and that's what causes the crack so real gentle, just snug. And uh, yeah, that's how you do that. You don't want to get the reefing on these things. They'll, they'll crack. Then I flicked my, whatever you call that thing. Um, Here's your hack when you're working on one of these low profiles. You see this? You see, I got these little jaws. I can grab things. Because if you're like me, you're going to flick half of the stuff all around and you can reach in there. And sometimes the little magnets will work, but most of the time the mag, you know, the hardware is stainless. So magnets don't do you no good. But here's my little roly-poly thing. So, I got my gasket there. I cleaned it up. I got a new top on my garbage raider. And now we got to put this little guy back in there. And it has to go in there first. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but even if I could film it, you wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing, sadly. 
just ain't no room in there. And we got big old fat fiends like me. I got no room to get you in there. I can show you once I get it hooked up. If I get it hooked up. <laughs> Alright. There's that part. What I'm trying to do here. Then you get a special screw and a special washer. And what did I do with my special washer? Dog, are you telling me I lost both of them? Both of them? Now, well, as soon as I find the washer, I'll be back. Okay, this is what I'm doing right here. Your cam roller. It takes about, you know, I got big fat feelers on me, so I have to get it started, then come in from here. And there's a special washer that goes right there, so that you can tighten this down, and that still allows this deal to be free like that. So I hope you can see it. it's the best I can probably get for you right there. But that's what I was doing. Getting that thing on. You gotta get... Oh wait a minute, I just messed up. Back up! I just messed up. You gotta get this. Mm. Actually, there's another way I can do it. Sometimes it works. I'm going to try that first. Normally, it's easier if you'll put that um, 7 16 carb bolt on first. But I'm going to try this. I'm going to try the old... This thing. I got my 7 16 inch bolt stuck to the tip of this screwdriver with some Vaseline Petroleonis jelly. You understand as I speak it Spanish. <laughs> and I'm going to try and come in here with this sideways without undoing that thing again and see if I can get it started. Which this works pretty good most of the time. Most, not all. And I just dropped it. So, no, that didn't work. It will work, but it's probably now. I got to find my bolt or my nut rather, and I see it down there. <laughs> Somewhere I saw it. There it is. See, ain't much room to work in there. Missed it. Well, I'm going to have to move you guys. Because I can't get it from there. I can't get it from there. I don't even know if I can get it from here. We'll try to. Hey, I got it. I got it. I fished it out. But yeah, you really need to uh, put this one nut over here on before you put the cam roller on. And I forgot to do that. So, I'm going to have to take it back off and do it. And then, of course, I'll drop all the cam roller pieces down in there. You know, you know. Push the little special washer out of my way. Now, even though I'm going to set that up there gently, it's going to fall. <laughs> now. I'm still going to do the uh, screwdriver and petroleum thing, but I should be able to get my fat feeler in there now. Come on, you. Come on, you. You can do it. Nope. Not that time. Not that time, and I dropped it again. And I got it again. 
All right, Joe, I think I've got it that time. Yeah, you got to get that on there before you... Put that cam roller on there or else you... You can get it on there sometimes coming in from the side, but then you have a real, real hard time tightening it up. I've gotten it on there and just used my long needle nose. But you should put that one on first. All right, the other one typically ain't that bad. Let me back around here. So you can kind of see what I got going in here. Zoom you out a little. Tilt you down a little. Now I just got to get this one on. I'm so envious of all you little skinny fingered fellas. And there it went. I can see it. Everything in the way. Everything in the way. Come out of there, you. Yeah. We're getting real now. We getting real now. I can't even see the bolt. There it is. You guys can see it better than I can. There it is. There it is. Boy. Sometimes I can get these first try. Other times I'll spend 20 minutes trying to get them started. I think I got it. Boy Joe. Even a blind squirrel gets a nut once in a while. Yeah. So you guys get the idea of what we got going down there now. Okay. You see that needle's all bent up. I tried to straighten it and probably made it worse. So I went out and got this one. It's different on the shoulders here though. So I don't, well, I don't know. I'm going to give it a try. Came out of pretty much the same garbage draper. So I'm going to gently seat it. I'd say right about there. Let's try it out. See what we get. See what we get. We get. Get a bunch of noise.
maybe this needle is different. I don't know. So let me go and see if I can find the exact one. But I think something's clogged in that old garbage radar, and I think I know what it might be. Well, I pulled the garbage radar off. I thought it was going to be this pickup tube right here, but it actually looks really good. So, but that one I did notice. When I pulled this thing off, I pulled this top back off, and there's just a whole bunch of yuck right there in that one passage. I doubt you can see it, but it's in there. So I'm going to give this a bath in my ultrasonic cleaner, blow it out one more time. See what happens. Adjustment don't seem to do much at all for it. So I've got it peeing. That was just mostly junk. Um, when I say junk, I'm talking yuck in the uh, passages. I went out and got another garbage raider, plastic top pile of you know, and uh, I took the carb that was on it off, put it in the ultrasonic cleaner, put the new plastic top. When I say new, a different plastic top, one that I cannot visually see a crack and it doesn't appear to be leaking, but it is sucking air somewhere because... Um, It doesn't want to idle. So I'm at the parent. Where I've got a couple angles I could go with this, this little kicker. Um, and I think I'm going to do it. It's been a while since I've done one. But I've had subscribers ask me if it's doable, can you do it? And I do remember. I had to change some things that they tell you you just soon leave alone and not change. But I believe I can clean up an all aluminum bodied carburetor off an older 15 and adapt it to this. I know I would have to change the choke setup a little bit and I think the fuel hose 
inlet to the bowls on the other side, on this side. So a little more hose to run, but if I remember right, it wasn't that tough. And I just hate these plastic top carburetors. Um, one of the dumbest things OMC ever did, you know, CPS. Um, there's a place for it. Like, for instance, the bowl. I have no problem, and I would even go as far as saying I prefer the uh, plastic bowl to the tin ones, which rust and get really yucky. Um, but that plastic top, it's had issues as far as I'm concerned ever since it came out, and they put out a service bulletin to tell you how to drill and tap the upper body and all um, to stop it. And this one's, this one's doing the very classic symptom that these do when that back right corner leaks. Um, and I've had this thing all apart. It's clean as far as I can tell. I ran it through the ultrasonic with heat and I left it in there a good 10 minutes and put the new top on it and it still don't want to idle. I was going to look, okay. Here's the difference right here. This is kind of a newer one. But that body's not bossed for it. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the one that they tell you to drill and tap. So it would be this one. One, two, three, four, five. No number six right here. So they want you to drill and tap that. Yucky, yucky, yucky. I didn't try this carburetor. Heck, maybe I should just... Well, that's a five screw, too. That's... Is that the one with the busted... No. Yep, I should have tried this car. Well, I'm going to think about it. But you see, here's one with the aluminum body. And you know, the fuel inlet is on the right side. It's on the correct side. It's the choke. Is it the choke? Where's the... Yeah, this one don't even have a choke. And that's all froze up. Hello. I'm not talking to myself. I'm doing a video. But I've had good conversations with myself. Um, yeah, this one's missing the whole choke, the whole choke butterfly flap and everything. So it could be a can to -de date to -de date um, to do that too. But this is what I like is the all upper aluminum. So I might look through my through my pile. I could sit there and play musical carburetors and go get another plastic top and another plastic top and a but I'm thinking I'm going to see if I've got a good solid top that has the choke and set the two down side by side and look them over real good and go see if I can't do that because I know I did it once. Um, the problem is the one I did it on I think was the post 93 and up. Not this one. And I'm almost positive because I remember the choke on the, the 93 and later is just a pin that sticks up. And then the slot thing goes over top of just a pin. And that's, that's not a pin. Well, I don't know what it was because it's gone. <laughs> so I have to go look at the pile. But it's getting late. I'm getting hungry. And uh, I'm sure this one's went long enough. And I guarantee you in somewhere in that mess was a hack. So, you guys have a wonderful Memorial Day, and thank you for watching, as always. That's one more hack from Kodiak. More vids are coming on Inside Out Boards with your host, Cody Bass.